Hello, everyone, and welcome to Healing Wednesday in the Circle of Twelve. Well, happy Wednesday, January 10. We're here with the third program of 2024. Now, if you're paying attention, you'd say, what? Wait a minute. This is not the third program. This is the second program. I was almost thinking that myself. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> what? How, this is the second Healing yeah, Wednesday. I, didn't, How can I don't it be think I third? warned you about that. Well, listen, <laughs> hopefully all of you joined us for another green mist. Oh, and that was given last Sunday. That's you right. see, that makes it three programs. There are now a total of four Green Mist replays in your portal, and there are, they're there for you to enjoy as many times as you want. Ah, oh, but wait, Lee, there's more. Oh, I, love it. I love it when you say that. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> are you aware, our beautiful Healing Wednesday members, that there is another extra program coming up for you this month? It's the second Fifth Wednesday special that we're going to give, and it's where Lee and I are joined by our good friend Marilyn Harper. It will be on Wednesday evening. January 31, we'll be in our special cabin studio and many of you have actually recognised that we have Mount Shasta in the background of our cabin studio and Adironda and Cryon are going to respond to the questions of the day from me. We will share with you more of the fun times that Marilyn and Lee have had together. Offering these additional programs, it's our way of thanking our beautiful members. And it seems that the Green Mist and Fifth Wednesday specials have been very well received. So thank you, everyone, for the wonderful feedback you've given us. Right now, it's time for some more affirmations. We're going to use the same affirmations from last week. And if you love affirmations, like Lee and I love affirmations, we've actually created an online course. It's offered in the Chrysalis Academy, and you can find out more at crinemasters.com. But right now, let's get to those affirmations. They're a great way to posture the energy around us, and the words you speak are so powerful. When you combine that with pure intent, well, that's where the magic happens. So are you ready for some magic? I certainly am. So take a moment and focus within, and I remind you that the cells of your body is so ready to hear what you have to say and what your instructions are. Dear Creator, I give thanks and celebrate our connection and the divine spark that resides within me. Today, I give instructions to that magnificent part of me to push the energy of positive expectation and benevolence into my future. I trust in my angelic self to always bring me the solutions and synchronicities I need. I allow myself to receive the infinite love and blessings the Creator has for me. Dear Creator, I give thanks and celebrate our connection and the divine spark that resides within me. Today I give instructions to that magnificent part of me to push the energy of positive expectation and benevolence right into my future. I trust in my angelic self to always bring me the solutions and synchronicities I need. I allow myself to receive the infinite love and blessings the Creator has for me. Dear Creator, I give thanks and celebrate our connection and the divine spark that resides within me. Today, I give instructions to that magnificent part of me to push the energy of positive expectation and benevolence into my future. I trust in my angelic self to always bring me the solutions and synchronicities I need. I allow myself to receive the infinite love and blessings the Creator has for me. I really hope all of you feel the truth of these statements as we do as we say them. You can receive infinite love. I know it. I felt it. We'll be saying these same three affirmations again 
the, not the three <laughs> affirmations, but we say it three times. We say the same affirmation three times. We're going to use it next week, and you can find all of these affirmations we've given you over the last few months within our portal in a section called Extras. That's in your portal, and that's also where you're going to find out these affirmations and um, other bonuses as well. So right now we'd like to go to the question and answer part of the program. And this question comes from Juliana and Juliana is from Italy. Juliana says, it becomes more and more difficult to live daily in a chaos that is increasing more and more and which is now everywhere and at all levels. Sometimes I even feel nauseous. When will all this end? How can we survive the intensification of heavy and negative energy? Sometimes I think I can't do it and I feel overwhelmed. Is it just me who feels this? Hello, Juliana. Actually, I answered this question or a piece or a part of it a few weeks ago. It was similar, but not exactly the same. I want to give a, another answer and make it even clearer. I think everyone needs to hear this. First, you're not alone. Feeling overwhelmed with it all, accompanied by negative energy, is, it creates sadness and unbalance for a lot of us. You're really not alone. So first we look at the why. Why are we feeling this? And we have to look at the why because that's where the solution is. Most of us who view this program in any language, those who are watching it now, you are compassionate old souls. I think this is really built in to who we are on earth at this moment. We care. And the caring perhaps is the compassion is the why. And we're a very empathic group of people called lightworkers. We can't look at what's going on all around on this planet and not care. That's the why. It keeps us overwhelmed. Indeed, it does. In my previous message, I told everyone what the solution was, and it works. I'm going to do it again. The general solution is that all of us must now reframe our empathic ways. Whoa. And convert the negative energy into action. Now, that is the answer. Not always easy. And listen, no light worker on this planet can afford to be overwhelmed or shut down by current events. We can't afford that. That completely disables our amazing ability to transmute energy. But that's the plan from those invested in keeping us feeling overwhelmed. In these new days of the shift energy where Krein predicted this battle would come between the dark and the light, we need to pay attention right now. Feeling overwhelmed and even nauseous at the negativity we are seeing is the exact reaction that those who are invested in creating this, they want to see it. And if that's you feeling this right now with so many others, well, they've won. If we're feeling that way, they've won. We're being informed by so many on this planet that we, the old souls, right now, have the ability to transmute energy, negative energy specifically, into compassionate energy. That's called compassionate action. So again, here are the steps needed. Number one, the basic one, do you give permission? Are you willing to do a little work to make this happen for yourself? Will you give allowance for a change in you to become less empathic, yes or no? That's the first one, yes or no. Number two, you'll hear it from me over and over, but it's needed. You need to hear it again. Stop watching the news. Stop watching it in broadcast form. Get your information at the rate you wish to know it and get it in written form. Perhaps a new news feed on the internet, something that's written down that you can control how you read it, how much you read it, how fast you read it. Those who broadcast the news, they create a biased window for you to look into, even scored with music that features the worst of the worst first. They create actually a dependence on people to watch it again and again. That's what they're invested in, viewership, and not much more. The news is programmed to you. I think you're aware of this. Number three, when you read or hear about the things that are going on, 
listen, or, or if, I want you to listen and, and, and listen on purpose of helping those you're hearing about. Write them down. Write down the things that bother you most, most and, and with the idea that you're going to revisit that note in, mom, in a moment. And that'll be number four. As you revisit that list that you've written down, use your intuition to who you think needs the most help with their sorrow or grief from you right now. Then picture them in your mind or a group of them in your mind. See them receiving a powerful transmission of light from you and also the collective yous all over the planet. Those are the ones, the old souls, who are doing this exact same thing with you. We are powerful. And this effort of reframing negative to compassionate action has been scientifically measured. That's another program. You know this. Groups of people acting together with light messages get through. Many are helped. And those who receive that help have no idea who helped them or where it came from. That's the beauty of it. But they're helped. Then we no longer are overwhelmed. We're no longer despondent on what's happening. The reason? Instead, we have an opportunity to immediately pray, meditate, send energy, and visualize peace and hope for those in trouble. If we are overwhelmed, then the dark side is one. They have disabled the biggest feature of the old soul, the ability to send light vast distances and strong, along with others of like mind, to bring hope and peace to those who really, really need it right now. What great instructions, Lee. I think it's a really good reminder of how powerful we are and that we can convert negative energy. And maybe that's where the term light worker comes. We're all working at this together. So I'd like to do one more question. It comes from Rachel and Rachel is in Australia. Rachel's asking, can you share more information about what we call angels and the angelic realm. Where do angels come from? How are they different from other higher dimensional or galactic beings who are not in physical bodies? Wow, Rachel, where do angels come from? Oh, that's a big one. Crine has given a lot of information about angels and the angelic realm. It's all over in many, many channels, but it's very difficult to explain it. I don't care how many times Crine explains it. I go, say what? <laughs> so stand by for an answer we may not fully be able to deliver or understand, but I'm going to do it anyway. So I always default here to the messages from Crine first. From Crian, quote, How do you explain color to a sightless person <laughs> who never ever saw anything? I mean, a sightless person doesn't even see in black and white. But for that matter, how do you explain specific colors to someone who has seen black or white? End of quote. <laughs> the answer is this. I don't think you can. The reality of color is only available for those who have seen it. Others cannot have it explained to them. It's just a confusing, esoteric discussion of some, some who have experienced it trying to tell others who haven't. I mean, think about it. How can I explain red to a person who has never seen anything, a sightless person? I don't think it's possible. So here come the angels. Crying has told us that we are singular digit dimensional beings and almost nothing else in the spiritual world around us is. So what happens with that is that angels in their most basic and beautiful form are often Frightening to us. <laughs> Here comes an angelic energy that moved through the wall in front of us with a majestic rainbow of iridescent colors. Hmm. Visible mostly through our third eye. And we're terrified. I mean, we've never seen anything like it. And so what does that angel say to us at that moment? Well, documented in scripture is all over the planet. I've told you before. The answer is that the angel stands before you and says, don't be afraid. Fear not. Truly, if angels were singular like us and dimensionality like us, they'd all be beautiful creatures with flowing robes and halos, and we wouldn't fear them at all. So right away, we know that all those wonderful paintings that depict them like that, they're probably, like, incorrect. <laughs> According to Cryon, there is a vast amount of what we call life in multidimensionality. It's not definable as life by our biologists, 
And that makes it crazy weird. In fact, anything we experience in multidimensional form is crazy weird. <laughs> and things we see or experience that are multidimensional almost always defined as evil or occult. Dang, excuse me, but what chance do we have to experience an angel who is ready to give us a wonderful healing when we slam the door and call the exorcist? <laughs> So right away, you may get the picture. We can't even sense or identify good things when they're out there because they're not in the box of our own reality. We've never seen red. We've never seen color. Krein tells us that they are all family. Angelic beings see us as extensions of the creative source of the universe. Angelic beings know us, love us, and have a great sense of humor as well. They laugh when we laugh. They work around to help us. Unless we won't let them. Unless we slam the door. They are here on our planet to work with us humans. If we give them free choice to do so. Listen, this is from Cryon. Quote, there are no evil angels. There are no angels who are out to get you or trick you. End of quote. Those perceptions are all the programming we get from the movies we see or the mythology that we've been given as truth. Angels come from the same place we come from. They exist as creations from God, the creative source, spirit, whatever you want to call it. And the most startling message of all that I can give you about angels is this. We are angels when we're not here. Our human soul is angelic. And it's only the 4D part that we get to play with while we're here. How beautiful, Lee. And I think it's time now for a meditation and a channel from Cryon. And I want to make this for Juliana to help you relax. And so I invite you to close your eyes and place your hands on your heart area. And all we're going to do is slow our breathing Breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. And just continue focusing on your heart area. And we're going to now feel, sense or visualize deep gratitude to Cryon. Cryon loves humanity and says so many, many times. So just focus on that feeling of gratitude, so much gratitude that Cryon has come to us delivering messages of compassion, love, hope, reminding us of our own magnificence. And from this place of gratitude for the love and compassion of Cryon, let us welcome in the message from Cryon today. Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. Is it possible for you to control your future? That is the message that is the second part of a future series of four parts. What a question. Is it possible for you to control your own future. There would be those who say it's a dumb question. It's a dumb question because the future isn't here yet. How can you control something that hasn't happened? And then we return to that which we have told you many times before. And that statement we've made, we've made so many times before starts to align with some of the higher thinking physicists of today. Time is a construct. It's variable. It's linear for you. But the truth is, in a multidimensional word, one word, it all exists together. That's the word, together. Past, present, future are one thing existing together. That's a multidimensional concept. That's not the one that you received or that you live with. And we're aware of that. So it's a puzzling thing, is it not for you? The whole idea that, that time may exist altogether in one now also is puzzling. Don't try to figure it out. 
Instead, let's give the answer to the question that I just gave. Is it possible for you to control your future? The answer is yes. Perhaps not in the way you thought. I want to paint a picture for you. A picture that is especially poignant for Americans. I want to take you back to a terrible day, an awful day. But I have to show you something, miracles within that day. The day that the planes hit the towers, you all know what I'm talking about. All of these years removed from that, the stories began to come out. Not exactly the, the stories that what happened around the towers or, or, or in the towers or anything like that. No, it was about those who, who were not in the towers, who should have been. Story after story. They varied slightly, but they all had one theme. Something kept them from going to work that day. And if you start looking at the stories or you to interview them, they would go like this. I am always a punctual person. I pride myself on being at work on time. I have to get through the, the New York traffic or, or take the, the taxis or whatever or the, or the tubes to get there on time, and I do. I'm proud of that. But this day, well, I just fooled around a little bit too much in the kitchen and the uh, <laughs> I had to clean something I hadn't I necessarily thought I needed to clean before. And I, I knew it would make me late, but I thought that that's okay today. I just needed to do it. It's so unlike me. And then I didn't go when I started watching the television. I missed it. And to this day, I know there was an angel on my shoulder, perhaps, or I sensed something, perhaps, but it was so unlike me. I didn't go. Others will tell very interesting stories of what kept them away that day from walking into death. They would tell you, well, I work on one of the floors. It was above the, the crash. I wouldn't have made it anyway. They wouldn't have been here. But something kept them away from that. Well, I had to do this or that, and it's a bit unlike me, but I chose to do that. One would say, I took a sick day, and I don't even know why I wasn't sick. I don't know why. It's just something about it that, that said, don't go. So here is the question for all of you. How could they sense something that hadn't happened yet? Ah, do you think it's possible that the future does at some level, the energies of it exist in the now? And that perhaps if you're tuned into that through a magic word, I'll give you in a minute, that you can sense what might be coming immediately and dodge the bullet. And what is that magic word? Some of you are way ahead of me. Intuition. Is it possible to develop a higher intuitive power that is a multidimensionality itself that allows you to sense a little of what's coming. There are those who will tell you that they're driving along in their car and they think they must stop for a moment on the side of the road. And those with him, with him, perhaps their children, mom, why are you stopping? What are we doing? And mom, if you had to answer that, you'd say, I don't know, honey. I'm just stopping for a moment. And then when you drive forward yet again, when it's safe, you see that what you missed was a giant accident. You would have been in it. How many of you moms have had that happen? I'm seeing hands raised. You just told the future, didn't you? You just controlled, controlled your own future because you're alive. That is controlling your future through intuition. That is how it's done. How does one develop an intuition, a power 
that have the ability to sense the future. If you ask that of anyone, a friend or whatever, they say, what are you talking about? What are, you, are you crazy? And I want to tell you, dear ones, that I give you examples of those who have done it. And I'm also telling you that your intuition was designed to keep you out of trouble. Your intuition was designed for you to pick up things. The mother who is asleep in the bedroom wakes up and has an intuitive thought that the infant who is supposed to be asleep needs her. She gets up and walks into the room and finds she's right. The infant is tangled up in a sheet or something and is very uncomfortable. She corrects it and goes back to bed. Thank you, God. What just happened? That is inbred in every mother. That is an intuition that allows you to sense something that is not necessarily happening right there with you. That same intuition is available to sense what might be happening next for you. We have given you pieces and parts of this information for a very long time. I want my partner and his partner, that is the Lee and Monica, to put together a course that would help you to hone your intuitive skills as a light worker, as an old soul, and help you with these senses. And it's not just to sense what's coming, dear ones. It's to sense who you are. It's to sense the angels in the room. Think of that. Is it possible for you to control your future? Now we get into the power of affirmations and positive thinking, and they're related. What if your future consisted of a road never traveled, because you haven't been there yet. But what if I told you that you had a crew who could work on that road so that when you got there, it'd be smooth? <laughs> Welcome to affirmations. Energy, consciousness that goes in front of you and paves the road so that your future is controllable and you just did it. It's smoother than it would have been if you hadn't done it. That is an absolute multidimensional tool using the concept of everything being in the now, past, present, future. If your future is in the now, you can work with it. Did you get that? If your future is really in the now, you can work with it. To the extent of working in 4D, you can work with it. You can use the affirmations. You can use that which is yours to hone the intuition, to help you, to put in front of you a smoother road. Dear spirit, you might say, today I see all that is before me smoother than it would have been. I give gratitude for what is going to happen. I put in front of me being at the right place at the right time. Dear angels around me, help me through the day. Help me to turn left when I should and right when I should and not to walk into inappropriate areas of negativity. Thank you. This is your power. <laughs> this is your legacy. Yes, you can control your future. These are the things that I have been teaching for 34 years. But interestingly enough, they're only starting to be listened to now. Listened to in an actionable way. Listened to with an eye to, yeah, I can do that. Instead of, it's impossible or it's for masters only. Do you see what's going on on this planet? There are tools that are coming to you you've never had before. The biggest, enhanced, 
intuition. What if you had an intuition where you could look at someone on the television who is wanting to be perhaps elected to some post and you could tell whether they were truthful or not? What if that was within your grasp? Don't you think that might make a difference for the planet? Because it wouldn't just be you. It would be millions of old souls. It would be a human race which was starting to have a far better intuitive idea of who to elect for what post. That would change everything. Can you control your future as a group, as individuals, through enhanced intuition, through the idea that a multidimensionality exists now that can help you in the future, an allowance for these things for you? That's the answer. I am Cryon. I am in love with humanity. Humanity is evolving, dear ones. Light is here. And so it is. Oh, and following that beautiful message again, beautiful, beautiful message from Cryon, I invite you to bring your awareness back into your body and if you've had your eyes closed, I invite you to open up your eyes and this next part of the program we have a special guest joining us and truly remarkable, inspirational, uplifting, what a delight that we are joined this evening by Angie Hipple and I want to make sure that she's on the Zoom feed with us. Angie, are you there? I'm here, Monica Lee. It's so great to see you. Thank you uh, for having me. It is such a pleasure and for our audience oh, yeah. that don't know, Angie has been on many cryon seminars, our Alaska tour, yeah. and she yeah. even met her sweetheart on a cryon oh. Adventure. That happens a lot. I know. I love it. <laughs> I love it. As we reported, it happened with us too. It did. If it wasn't for Cryon, yeah. there'd be no reason for Lee and I to hook up. <laughs> that's, that's true. Well, Angie Hipple um, of the Judah Channel is a passionate seeker, spiritual teacher, and channeler of angels and other interstellar wisdom keepers. I could just stop right there. That's good enough. But some years ago, in a desperate attempt to ease her inner suffering, Angie embarked on an accelerated journey to heal her mind, her body, her emotions, and elevate her personal level of consciousness. Voraciously consuming the teachings of enlightened masters, she began, she, she actually began, I love this, deconstructing her deep religious programming, let's hear it folks, and dreaming about the possibilities of enlightenment. So it was during this season of meditation, ego stripping and deep surrender. I, and I truly think that is where the magic happens when you just release, let go, have that deep surrender. That is when Angie was suddenly and unexpectedly, and I love the use of this word, ambushed. <laughs> it conjures up quite a vision. But she said she was ambushed by a loving powerful collective of angels called Judah. I mean, how beautiful. And apparently Judah spoke through her in a dramatic, direct voice channeling encounter. And the result of these high vibrational energies created an immediate physical restoration from a two year chronic illness. And our side effect, well, it opened up many psychic gifts. Now you know why we call this Healing Wednesday, because even our guests in their awakening and their enlightenment get a healing besides, and she did. Now Judah and Angie, they tag team, love that word, together to deliver ancient divine wisdom from beyond with practical, real-world application. Together, they facilitate tangible experiences of higher dimensional energies for those who are in an awakening and enlightenment process. Many are right now. Her process is, I did it. Let's do it together. Now you do it. 
Angie, welcome to the program. Oh, thank you so much. It's such an honor to be here with you guys. It's really a dream come true for us. Thank you for having us. Well, it's, it's awesome for us as well. And one of the things that we always do every single time is to say, how did this happen? And um, tell us about the healing and the whole thing. I'm, I, you know, I'm kind of into this channeling thing, and I'm always interested when it happens and how it happens. Give us that. And uh, also, we have a little surprise, I think, later as well. Well, a few years ago, um, as happens to so many of us, um, there were some tragic, difficult events in my life, which none of us escapes, right? My father died suddenly. I was an only child, and I was heartbroken over that. And he left me with a family business that was providing for much of my family and some other families. It was a car business. I knew nothing about it. I was busy teaching school and taking care of my three kids and um, volunteering at my church. And I love to lead worship there. And so anyway, there was a lot thrown on my plate all at once. And uh, a, a family, uh, one of the employees of the business began embezzling from the business my marriage began to fall apart. So everything that had kind of worked for me in life just stopped working. And it was really a gift. It was a gift from heaven. It was an awakening for me. And so in the midst of all this difficulty was also, I could, it's like I could smell freedom. Um, I could smell some truth and realization coming to me. I began to question a lot of the things that I had just kind of taken to be true for me in my religious upbringing. I began to rethink, you know, what I felt, thought, believed, what I, how I understood God, all of those things. And so I really began a journey to just let go of everything that wasn't serving me. I, I began to be really painfully aware of my ego <laughs> and how it was causing me to suffer and and causing harm not only to me, but to the people I love the most. And I really began seeking. Uh, I met my new partner, Chuck Hipple, then in that season. And he was so instrumental in, in my process. And we had such a beautiful gift of spiritual partnership. And our early days together, dating, we're listening to Cry On and going to Cry On events. And he was so instrumental in helping me to embrace truth. He had the great privilege of actually living many years with an enlightened being named Osho in his early days. And so all of that was such a benefit to me. And we, when we got to COVID uh, in 2020, I early on in that spring, I contracted COVID and then had a series of unfortunate health consequences from that. And so I'd been chronically ill for two years, and Chuck was literally keeping me alive and um, and feeding me with his beautiful acupuncture healing gift that he has. He's a very enlightened healer. And so a couple of times, you know, I made it to death's door. We didn't know if I was going to pull through. But all of this, again, was still a setup. It was more surrender, more meditating, more letting go of what wasn't serving me. And just saying, you know, I don't know, but I'm open. And I sat in a chair literally for almost two years. I did very, very little. I was of no benefit to anybody uh, and just surrendered and meditated and surrendered and meditated some more. And towards the end of that time, Chuck and I were sitting on the couch one night watching a beautiful channeler, very much like Cryon. And he turned and he looked at me and he said, you know, you could do that. And I thought, <laughs> hmm, okay. Well, channeling wasn't really on my bucket list, but I'm open for anything at this point. I wouldn't say no to anything. <laughs> I'm just glad to be alive and breathing, and channeling is probably something I could do while I'm sitting in my chair. <laughs> and I, I love that you had permission to go, why not? Yeah. I, and let's I think that was the setup. Yeah. Like, oh, well, I'm just sitting here anyway, yeah. not feeling well. Let's go for it. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. And so, you know, that night I had the most profound experience during the night. At that time, we were waiting for my third uh, grandchild to be born. And I had been really sad because I wasn't 
going to be able to be there for the birth because I wasn't well enough. So that was another letting go for me. But that night during the night, I had the most profound experience. Judah came to me. I actually felt this little baby as if it was in my body, in my womb. I felt his little head pushing down on my pelvic floor. I felt my womb contracting. It was as if I was the mother and not the grandmother. And I could feel his sweet little spirit talking to me telling me that he was a higher dimensional being, why he was coming to earth, what he wanted to bring to the earth during this time. And he, he is such a treasure. You know, his name is Ember, and he was like an ember or a spark of life in such a difficult time for all of us. And so the next day I woke up and I sat down to type up this profound message And as I began typing, Judah began speaking through me again and telling me all about themselves. So Chuck came home from work that night, and obviously I was so excited. You won't believe what happened to me. And I read the first channel to him, and we said, well, let's, you know, we sat down on the couch and said, well, let's meditate, and and maybe they'll come through. And, And sure enough, this big, huge voice came through with this beautiful, loving message, and Chuck and I have been feel so privileged. I mean, every night, almost every night for the last two years, we sit together on the couch and just let Judah bring through this beautiful energy. And, and we just, we feel so thrilled and so honored. And of course, we immediately started giving it away because what do you do, right? You can't, when you're given a treasure, you can't put it in a box and sit on the lid. You have to, to give away what you've been given. And it's just been an amazing journey. And now we have a a global family that's thriving. We have friends all over the world that tune in with us every week and receive these free channels. And, and Judah, you know, made it clear from the beginning, you know, they're not here to hook you up with your soulmate necessarily, or give you the winning lottery numbers or anything like that. They are here to help us on our awakening and enlightenment journey. And boy, they really do it. They pull out the stops and they help us clear blocks and old thinking and ways of being that aren't serving us and help us to just bump up our level of consciousness into the next next level. And sometimes we, when we get in the room with them, you know, the levels of consciousness go up in those 800 ranges and, and we just get stoned, God stoned. And Chuck and I were saying the other day, I think we might have to hire a driver for some of these events because we're having a hard time getting around. (laughs) Absolutely. So um, I have a question about how can we embrace the truth of that fact that through Cryon and obviously through Judah, and they're showing us enlightenment is, is who we are. It's not something that has to be We don't have to attained. climb the stairs to get to something we already own. Yeah, so <laughs> you know? tell, us, we tell us more about that. How do that? we embrace that? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, our enlightened state, we're like the a beautiful, exquisite, one-of-a-kind antique. This is our enlightened state, but we've just been covered up, over with all these layers and layers and layers of paint, and now we're on the front yard in a garage sale, right? <laughs> and we've forgotten. We don't realize how valuable we are. So for me, you know, it's been a process of stripping away what's not God, stripping away what's not the enlightened being to discover, yes, there really is an enlightened person in there. You know, society tells us that we have to work harder that we have to do more, add on something, be more in order to attain whatever it is that we want, or that we have to take away or strip away something that's, you know, not not working to be successful. And so we can tend to overlay that whole idea onto our spiritual process. And we think, well, I've got to add on something. I've got to meditate more. I've got to do more of this or less of that, uh, more of my spiritual practice, less TV or, you know, whatever ideas we have. And the truth is, we are. We are. We are a piece of God. We are fractal of God. Um, You know, the fractal of God that Judah is, the fractal of God that Cryon is, is enough to support the whole universe. You know, we, we have really no concept about how powerful we are. And and Judah's always saying, yeah, we're a group of angels and yes, are we enlightened and powerful? Yes, but so are you. So are you. And it makes me think of that scripture where Jesus said, um, you are children of God, you're sons of God, and you are like the angels. 
you know, and so Judah is always reminding me, but yeah, you're an angel too. You're like an angel. You are a child of God. You are the essence of God in the earth and you are evolving into your angelic state. You're learning to embody it, to embrace it, to be it. Mm, It's almost like we've had amnesia. And it's now, very much like that. Yeah, yeah. and now the mm-hmm. amnesia is kind yeah. of dissolving and everyone's waking up going, oh, my goodness, we're a piece of exactly. God. You're a piece of God. How beautiful. I would love it if you feel open that we could hear from Judah. Do you think that's possible? Absolutely. I would love, I would love to let Judah come through. <laughs> Hello, 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 dear Lee and Monica and Cryon family. What a joy, what a joy, what a joy to be with you. You are a blessing in the earth, each and every one. You are a blessing in the earth. As you as you are listening, even in this moment, we want to give you our thanks and gratitude for you. See, you are a placeholder. You are like unto a cell tower. You, 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 you are receiving, sending and receiving, sending and receiving, sending and receiving the messages and energies of heaven. Each and every one of you are bringing heaven to earth through embodying your God-like state, your enlightened state. And so remember, remember, yes, dear, as Monica has said here, wake up, wake up and remember that you are glorious, you are powerful. The fractal of God that you are in the earth can change and shift your atmosphere, your inner atmosphere, the atmosphere of your home, the atmosphere of your workplace, of your city, of your nation, of the whole earth, begin to see your light, your light, your light emanation expanding and expanding and expanding to cover the whole earth. You are a delight. You are a delight. There's nothing about you that is a turn off to us. Where you are, how you are at this part and moment of your journey is perfect in our eyes. You are perfection itself. Love and embrace every bit of yourself exactly as you are, no matter what you're feeling today, whether you're the lowest of the low or the highest of the high, we are with you. We are here to support and encourage you. We angels such as ourselves and the dear Cryon and all the holy archangels, we are empowering you. We are your power tools to cut through what doesn't serve you, to get rid of what doesn't serve you. We are the power tools that will cut and clear and cut and clear until you see there, oh, there you are, your beautiful God self. You are a glory in the earth. Yes, you are evolving even into an angelic state like unto ours. We are simply your big brothers and sisters who are showing you the way. Through us, you can, you can, uh, uh uh-huh, uh-huh, understand this vicarious learning for you may be much like this vessel. Maybe you had suffered much at the hands of life, at the hands of, of egoic conditioning and so on. But we would say to you, there is an easier way. There is an easier way. It is called vicarious learning. You see, when this vessel had three children and her youngest would watch the old ones doing certain things that didn't turn out so well for them, doing things that led them to suffering or punishment or some uh, 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 unwanted outcome. And as she saw that, she said to herself in her inner being, oh, I don't think I'll do that. I don't think I'll go that way. And because of that, she was able to learn and avoid suffering. And so we are like that for you, dear ones. We are your big brothers and sisters. We are showing you how to be in your enlightened God state and how to be connected with all that is and accept everything going on in your environment, in your day-to-day life as exactly as it should be and surrendering unto the will of source. And so you can avoid this suffering and then begin to simply learn with wisdom from us. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we, it is our delight and honor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We give great respect to Cryon and to all who serve, to all who serve. Wherever you are, you are a channel of life and love and glory and goodness. 
and think nothing of any other thought that comes to you about yourself. You are grace. You are goodness. You, we embrace every part of you and who you are with all love and joy. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and we give you our blessing from the top of our head to the bottom of your feet. Yes. May your year be full, 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 full of bliss, 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 and goodness. <laughs> Thank oh you, Gina. Oh, my goodness. I hope you all I... paid attention to this. Did you notice something about this channeling? It's one of the things we teach. Uplifting, joyful, filled with hope. There's nothing being asked for you to do the, other than join the party. <laughs> so this yes, is join the party. This is right. Mm -hmm. This is spirit giving what spirit does, and that is you're a piece of the Creator, and that is a joyful piece. And so you know, let's get with it, <laughs> basically. <laughs> so I love that. Thank you, thank you so much, Thanks. Angie, for 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 doing that. And I I want to share that the even. You know, people might think, oh, you know, Monica, you're always in this vibration with cryon and you're, you're on this enlightened path. And I have my human stuff as well. And for me, listening to that channel, I have to say there were such beautiful messages for me personally. It's, it's like Judah was talking to me personally and a beautiful reminder that my relationship to the creator is probably the most important relationship can exist. And when I'm reminded of that and step into that, it's like all the other human stuff, rhetoric going on in my brain dissolves. And so I just yeah. deeply from the bottom of my heart, thank you for bringing through Judah. So beautiful. And this is all, it leads us to another we can related question to what Monica just said, and that is there's many who, who perceive limitations that they have, and yes. it's perhaps all subconscious, but it's very real. There are obstacles that we are holding next to us so personally. How do we get through that to get to the, the truth? Yeah, many times, you know, Judah has said, fear is always built on a lie. Deal with the lie and the fear will die. And so, you know, any sense of lack or limitation that we have is a lie. And and sometimes, boy, those tangible material, you know, evidences, it seems, around us will tell us otherwise. But we just have to tap back into our inner being and in our inner being, we feel the expansiveness of the love. There's nothing. I, there's a scripture that I love. It says, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing, 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 nothing. And so Judah keeps encouraging us. We have our tough days too. Boy, we have some really dark days. Whoever coined that phrase, dark night of the soul. Well, we'll call it dark night of the ego. You know, it, it, it's a thing. It's a thing that happens, you know. But in that we still know, even when we feel like we can't connect, that God has not left us, source has not left us, angels are still there. And when we get on the other side of it, we remember it. We remember it again. And there they are. They're right there for us. They've been there all along. So what advice do you have for anyone tuning in and watching right now who are in the process where you were two years of chronic pain. I mean, when you're going through the eye of the needle, it's so, can't even put words into it because I've been there and you've been there. So what advice right. do you have for someone going through that now, not on the other side of it, they're in it? Okay. Well, and you know, I had, I'll share too, I had a moment, um, an experience of a few minutes where I almost felt as if I was in hell. And I thought, if I have to go through five more minutes of this, I don't know if I'll survive it, right? So just know that to the degree that you're experiencing hell, you're going to experience heaven. Because now the heaven that I experienced with Judah is so profound that I can't even remember the hell anymore. And, you know, the way we get into that heart space, this is what Judah taught me, to get into that heart chakra and be okay no matter what's going on in our life, we we come to acceptance. And so I would sit in that chair and I would say, can I let go of wanting and needing to be healthy? And can I let go of wanting and needing to be sick? 
Can I let go of wanting and needing to be healed? Can I let go of wanting and needing to be healthy or unhealthy? And I just kept working on that in meditation until I literally became okay with whatever. Whether I live, whether I die, it's all in the hands of my maker. And, and it will be exactly what it's supposed to be. And I surrender. And it's not something you can just say like a mantra. You have to actually experience it. And so my why in everything I do with Judah is this, to give people experiences of divine love and wisdom and high consciousness energy so that they can be free and achieve their enlightened state. How would you differentiate, because I heard everything you said and completely understand it, but there's always the part of me that's the investigator and the reporter. So how yeah. do you well, like dis <laughs> how do you distinguish between let go and let God, which is not what we teach, which cry and says you are in control and you're empowered. How do you yes. differentiate let go and let God with surrender? surrender? Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Let go and let God. Well, let go and let God was always a tough one for me. When people would say that to me, I would think, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> Can you explain to me how to do that? Yeah, and it, you know, I always had trouble with it because it's a cop-out. Like, I'm not responsible. Yeah, let go and let God. Yeah. It's like, no, yeah. you are responsible. To let, it's let well, go can, of your baggage and take care of your magnificence. Yeah. Yes, yeah. but yeah. Exactly. Well, I'll tell you what surrender looked like for me. I had to, surrender for me was to buy the truth. The truth is whatever's going on inside of me or outside of me that I've created it. And, you know, it's easy for us to get excited about the good stuff when we create the good stuff and we're manifesting the good stuff. But can we really take responsibility and own the yucky stuff? You know, and I had to buy the truth that I had created this illness for a purpose and a reason and accept that. And so for me, surrender is that whatever's going on in my life, whether I want it or, or don't want it, I tell myself the truth that I've created this and I function as if I've created it, even if I don't understand why. You know, there are things, uh, traumas that I've been through as a young person. I hear heinous traumas and things that other people go through. And it's it's a difficult thing to accept, but I encourage them. You may not know or understand why, but your soul chose this for some reason. So let's live and operate as if we created it. And that is how we surrender, I think. I think, too, what you just shared with us, for me, it's like another little penny clicking in. Yeah. When you surrender okay I created it and let's move forward you move past resisting mm -hmm. and when because you, you yeah, want to keep resisting that horrible icky yucky stuff it doesn't it doesn't feel good but the more you try and resist that takes energy resisting something yes and, and one of um, Judah's acronyms that they gave us is no jar no judgment no attachment no resistance and so I, have, I actually have a little jar in my kitchen that says no jar on it. I <laughs> so, love that. You know, we, <laughs> yeah. So we don't judge whatever's happening. We don't judge it as good or bad. We don't judge it as right or wrong. We don't judge ourselves. We don't judge others. We don't judge the political system or the circumstances or the war. We don't judge any of it. We just know that there is a source out there that's ordained everything that's happened and that he's not asleep or she's not asleep at the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then, you know, giving up our attachments to our roles you know, I even had to give up my attachment to my role as a wife. I wasn't able to cook dinner. I wasn't able to do laundry. I, you know, I wasn't able to be that, that grandma that, that I wanted to be when I was sick. Right. And so I give up, gave up my attachments to my roles. And then, as you said, dropping the resistance, if it feels resistant, just dropping it. And sometimes doing nothing is a the best strategy ever. 
<laughs> Beautiful. We found that to be true as well. Yeah. Well, I want to let everyone know there are some amazing special offers that have been prepared A just for our community. For uh-huh. You'll see that offer in the chat. And if you're having to watch the replay, that link to the offer will be below the video. The website, go and check out the judahchannel.com and Angie, this has been so wonderful, so helpful for me personally, so I know it's also going to help all those tuning in. Are there any final words you want to share? Just that that we love you guys so much. We thank you for blazing the trail for us, and we just send all of our love to the Cryon family, and if there's any way we can serve you, we are happy to do that. Oh, my it's goodness. A, a she she is close, part of the crying oh, family, yeah. the All Judah right. family. Let's keep her around. Yes. Right, that's great. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> please, please, please. Oh. <laughs> I'm going in your suitcase wherever you go. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Well, thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, Lee, it's always a delight. Soul wonderful. family meeting soul family. All right. We're isn't gonna, it? I think we're going to put her in our suitcase. And take her <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> she already said <laughs> she's was, coming yes. in our suitcase. So, <laughs> Lovely. Uh, what we're going to do now is take a break and we'll see you back here very soon for the Circle of Twelve. Well, welcome back, everyone. Wasn't Angie a delight, Lee? And I love that. Wasn't that, she, was it? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, well, I was uh, going to say that I love when people who come to the cryon meetings and then they have this amazing gift that gets that gets awakened and they are now awakening others. So here's, here's the point of me saying that is because you watching this program, I get so excited thinking about what you are going to do in the future and how many people you are going to awaken. I agree. I also like the way Judah came in. Mm. And that so was fast. like unexpected. Yes. He was like, why don't you have Judah? Hi. <laughs> there it was like, there was so, and this tells me that you have this beautiful loving entity that can hardly wait to talk to us. Exactly. <laughs> I felt that so excited. Yeah. Like Judah was like, right there. Right, yeah. Come on, let's get going. Let's was, give the message. That's great. I, and it oh. means that there's this beautiful meld 24-7. Oh, that's like crying. Yes. <laughs> Thank right. you, Angie. Thank you, Angie. <laughs> well, it's time to begin to do what we call Miracle Moments. And one of our favorite sections of the program is this one. We love to share people's healing and success, and we love to involve our wonderful group of viewers in helping others to heal. Now, you can find the Miracle Moments section in your membership portal, and that's always where you can request prayers of help and benevolence for yourself or someone you love. It's also a place where you can share your miracle with us. We truly love hearing about all the miracles that have happened. It could be a miracle that heals the heart. It could be a miracle that heals emotions. It could be amazing synchronicity, any of those things, or it could be a physical healing of the body. All miracles are worth celebrating. And so I'd like to ask Monica to share a miracle moment which happened to one of our Circle of Twelve members. And this miracle moment, it was shared in the membership portal. It comes from Catherine, but I actually had to read through it several times until I could do it without what I call compassion tears welling up. It's so profound. It's so beautiful. And even when I shared it with Lee, he was deeply moved, as was I. So Catherine says, okay, Catherine says, my beloved soulmate, passed back to spirit. Before he passed, he was transferred to a regional hospital in Victoria, Australia, although he was supposed to be transferred to Melbourne. Due to bad weather, he had to be transferred by road ambulance instead of helicopter, and this meant he was accessible for me to visit. And from the beginning, things did not look good for him. So I said to him, just try, David. I also told him, that I might not be able to be with him if he passed. So this is my miracle. I was able to be with him when the time came. I realized as the doctor told me that life support, the life support machine was the only thing keeping him alive. That's when I realized my beloved wanted me to be with him at his last moment in this earthly life. I kissed him and said, Do not worry, David. I love you. Do not be afraid. I will stay with you. 
And that's when he half opened his eyes and looked at me and I stayed as they removed the life support and he passed away peacefully at 13, 13 hundred hours. It was such a privilege to be there with him. The other miracle is my journey to find Healing Wednesday to have gained the knowledge I have about life after death. He only leaves his earthly body behind and his spirit lives on. Though my humanity kicks in, it is wonderful to have time with him in spirit. Thank you, Healing Wednesday. Thank you, Cryon, Lee, Monica. Thank you, everyone. Oh, thank you, Catherine. And uh, gosh, it, it still kind of wells me up with such emotion, with the profundity and the beauty of that experience. So thank you for sharing. And I hope those of you tuning in feel uplifted by Catherine's story of life after death. If you are grieving for someone you loved, know that they are here right now. In fact, I feel David's spirit so happy that we are sharing this and there is such elation going on behind the scenes right now. Oh, so beautiful. Let us now help give solace and comfort to those who are asking for our help. And that's what we do best as light workers and old souls. So I invite you to close your eyes and allow every part of your body to relax. Put yourself in a position where you can be completely comfortable relaxed and supported, at ease. And in this place of comfort, support and ease, allow your breathing now to slow down a little. Allow all the tension in your body to dissolve and place your attention on the area of your heart. And as you continue to breathe, be aware that right now in this moment, all of our beautiful, loving, compassionate hearts are sharing a synchronized heartbeat. There is a coherence of energy being created between all of those who would take the time to sit and send energy of compassion, love, and benevolence to those who are requesting our help. And so there are many, many names and situations that have been listed, both past, present, and future. All names and situations are known at a quantum level by that magnificent part of our soul and by all the angels all the angelic realm, by Cryon, by Spirit, by Judah, by all the loving entities. Every request is known. And so let us send a wave of comfort, support, love, acknowledgement. Physically hold the hand right now of everyone who is requesting our help. And there is nothing to do, there's nothing to say. It is simply the mere presence of our desire to be there in support of that other person as they move through whatever challenge they face. We are there holding their hand metaphorically, lifting them up, telling them they are magnificent, And that in the eyes of God, the eyes of the creator, whatever name you have for spirit, they are seen as perfection itself. And let us extend our hands to now include every brother and sister on the planet. 
And that as we hold the hands of our brothers and sisters, all we need do is look at them as the way the Creator looks at us and see the divinity that is within each person. And that is enough. And now we will gently hold this visualisation of a coherent earth as we move across to Cryon. Greetings, dear ones, I am Cryon. Come a little closer. This is the Circle of Twelve. Earlier on, Judah came through. Now I have a secret. I know Judah. <laughs> and so do you. It's interesting how those who channel have obtained the names of those that they are channeling. And quite often it is given to them by those they are channeling. In my case, I told my partner the name Cryon. The name has a numerological value, a sound, but that's not my name. And you might find that shocking. You're not Cryon? I don't have a name, dear ones, like you have a name, which is singular. Let me ask you, if you could magically appear in a room with all of your past lives, and we've done this in the circle of 12, they're all in the audience in front of you, what is your name? What is your Akashic name? for a hundred individuals that are you. You wouldn't have one. I'll give you one. Spirit, beauty, love, God. Pieces and parts of the whole all of us are. But we all channel to you either with a name or we say we are a group. But we then often give the group a name. It makes you comfortable, dear ones. Judah is a group, is the same. But did you notice the, the personality difference with Judah? Raring to go, as my partner says, and very excited to do what? To speak to humanity through a vessel that would allow it with purity. The other side of the veil is bursting to tell you things. Because you sit at the crux of change for this planet. Beautiful change. I have someone for you to meet that might tell you about that beautiful change. It's somebody you met one time so far. I'll tell you when we get there. Let's cross that bridge together as we do in every circle of 12 from the beginning. Take my hand. Let's go. Across the bridge, metaphorically, we walk. The visualization moving from that which you're very comfortable with and know every day to something which is exceptionally special and has a different kind of reality. You, your soul. A multidimensional creature you are, even while you're on earth. But here in the soul where we are going, you can exercise all of that which is metaphysical and multidimensional. It's you. It really is you. Now you may key in to the name on the door that you may go through. Come with me across the middle of the bridge to that place which is your soul and you are there in, in all of its beauty, whatever it looks like to you, and you go through that door and there again is the name on the door. And it's your name and you cannot see it. You may think you could see it 
I have alluded to the fact that it keeps changing. Now you may know a little more about why crying is not crying. Just as I've said, you are many. One soul manifested as many human beings on the earth for a very long time, old soul. But this lifetime may be one of the most important. This may be the graduate lifetime, not that you're going to stop coming, but this is the end of an old energy, perhaps, that you are facilitating the solution of. <laughs> Move with me into this beautiful room, this big room, again, where you will be facilitated by an angel. What this means is you can sit and be loved and feel what this angelic source has to give you from right from what you would call the angelic realm. What a beautiful thought that is. I spoke about angels in many of my channels. Today, my partner answered about angels. And yet still, it's a mystery to so many of you. Real or unreal, yes, they are real. But they do not appear in the reality of your four dimensions as you would expect them to. They can't. Only a part or a piece of an angel can really be with you. It would be too much energy for you to experience the entire package. We've told you something that you might relate to. For those of you who've studied the older scriptures, Moses had an experience with an angel but he called it a burning bush. That's what it looked like to him. That's the only thing that he had in his reality that even began to be acceptable. And it spoke to him and gave him messages. Dear ones, angels can be almost anything. <laughs> you can see them and hear them and experience them in any way that you wish to in four dimensions. However, here, they are beautiful and expansive and multidimensional and colorful. And they have immense energy. You can meet them here at their level. Here comes an angel. This angel you've met one time all of the series of the circle of 12 in all of the series of the green mist one time this is the second time that you will meet the angel who speaks to God the angel of love you might say it's not a name that trips off the tongue of everyone but it is known a name given by that angel so you would recognize it but it's more than a name. That angel is called Shamuel. Shamuel. This is the angel you might say is needed to take anxiety away from humanity about the future. This is the angel that can sit with you and speak to you in such a tone that it solves all of the problems that create and anxiety with you. This angel moves right through the subconscious and gets to love. This is the angel that clears the things that would allow perhaps peace on earth. It may even be a global angel. This is an angel for the future, Shamuel. Why should such a grand entity from the angelic realm want to come and be here at the circle of 12. And I will tell you this for all of you listening. It's the same reason Judah could hardly wait to talk. Because you deserve it. Because you're ready. 
If you could ask Shamuel, why are you here? Shamuel would say, because they're ready. Let this angel come right through you. Not just hold your hands, but sit with you in the chair, become you if you wish, and soothe that which would create any anxiety with you and show you the peace that actually belongs to you on a daily basis. Waking up without anxiety, moving through the planet as you do in your culture without anxiety, being peaceful even with those who are not. Dear ones, this is the gift you are being given tonight. Shamuel loves you, knows your name, and recognizes you as part of the angelic realm when you're not on earth. This is the key. Shamuel is a friend. Shamuel is family. Shamuel is here for you. Let this soak through you. Welcome it, allow it, be it, be peace. Dear ones, I am Kryon, in love with each of you, with the old soul that is evolving and developing. That's you. I know who's watching. I see you. I love you. And so it is.